Blender just upgraded to 5.0 and the list of updates is massive. New animation tools, new nodes, insane color upgrades, and so much more. But not only are all these updates free, they completely change how we animate, use nodes, even how we color. Blender 5.0 just changed everything. So let's break it down. Welcome to the Smith Brief. Animation has had so many updates over the past Blender versions, it's insane. But this one brings some massive changes to the table, particularly the timeline. This beautiful thing shows us some key info, like keyframes and camera markers. But for us animators, we use other things like graph editor and the dope sheet. This is not designed for complex animation. The entire timeline is almost pointless to have. So Blender is deleting it. Soon, not, not yet. <laughs> the plan is to fully remove the timeline down the track, but for now, it's getting simplified for just the essential. No more stacked menus on the side, no more animation related buttons. It's basically being mega stripped down. Holy Christ, there's nothing left. But this is actually extremely exciting because it gives us an entirely new animation tool called the footer. By default, this is in the dope sheet, the graph editor, even the NLA, and it gives us all the playback functions the timeline has, plus a couple new upgrades. Upgrades, people, upgrades. Keying sets now show you exactly what they're doing. Instead of guessing or trying to remember what you selected, it just straight up tells you, which is such a time saver. And a new operator jump time is now a thing. You can jump forwards or backwards by any amount of frames or seconds that you want. It's awesome. But this is nothing compared to the new animation update we just received. A completely new way of rigging and interacting with bones has just been made possible thanks to this. It's called the geometry attribute constraint. This is so exciting, but it's also really kind of confusing to explain. So stick with me here, okay? How would you go about attaching this Smeef to this bundle of cubes? Keep in mind, this is a geometry node setup full of instances. You can't parent to the instance, and even if you could, how would you choose which cube to put Smeef on? I'm asking you this because it's basically impossible. <laughs> the amount of math and node spaghetti this needs to just do that makes my computer want to explode. But what would you do if I told you this new constraint does everything I just described with one click? You gotta at least do this. I mean, it's kind of insane. This not only works with geometry, but also things like cameras, but more importantly, bones. Do you realize? Do you realize something? This means we can now finally manipulate bones and armatures with nodes. Before this update, it was a massive headache just to get bones to communicate with nodes. This is a huge step forward for the project rigging nodes becoming a reality. It's it's hard for me to explain how insanely cool this is. I mean, I feel like a caveman seeing fire for the first time. <laughs> but speaking of nodes, you don't need them anymore because Blender has built them in for you with modifiers. For example, arrays. Previously, the array modifier was a little primitive. You could choose from three options, and even then, there wasn't that much customization. Now, you can do all of this with just a few clicks. Circular arrays, unique scaling and randomization, the possibilities with this are endless. On top of that, there's also scatter on surface, which not only lets you scatter instances of objects on any model, it also has the ability to be controlled by images. Instance on Elements lets you do exactly what you think it does. Combine that with randomized instances and you get a whole lot of control. Curve to Tubes makes cylindrical meshes with beautifully unwrapped UVs. And finally, Geometry Input lets you change anything to be anything. All of these modifiers are Geometry Nodes setups, by the way, which are completely editable and created by the devs for the artist. So there's less of this, and more of this. Now, speaking of node groups, the compositor got a slick new upgrade with the asset shelf. Instead of learning or building out your own complex compositor nodes, you can just straight up drag and drop these awesome effects straight onto your renders. There's chromatic aberration, sensor noise, vignette, sepia, split tone, 
You can even color correct with the Tune Image asset. And if you really want to get crazy, Unsharp Mask lets you do this. All of these, again, are just there, free to use, and it's such a welcome upgrade to the compositor. But this is so much more powerful when combined with one of the most niche parts of Blender. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Some people don't even know this thing exists. And that is the Video Sequence Editor. This is a fully fledged editing workspace. And I don't usually cover these updates because nothing's ever really excited me about them until now. Generally, when working with the sequencer, you can add your own video and audio, but you can also work with your active scenes in Blender. As in the stuff in your 3D viewport, you can straight up just edit these in here. The problem, it's janky. Like Spy Kids 3 kind of jank, okay? <laughs> to edit something in the 3D scene, you first have to completely leave the video sequencer. Go to the 3D scene you want to edit, come back to the sequencer in a completely different scene, by the way, and wait for it to update. You have to do this for every single scene you want to edit. Okay. It's slow, repetitive, and frustrating to use. What if instead you could just put all your scenes into the video editor, open a new window, and edit any one of them on the fly with instant feedback. Change your camera angle, add a new object, and have it show in your final edit instantly. That's the update. <laughs> that, that we can do that now. <laughs> this alone is so powerful, especially if you're working on a short film or even just animation layout. Real-time synchronized editing is now possible, but it gets better. Remember the compositor? You can now throw these nodes directly onto your edit and play them back in real time. This is huge. It makes the video sequencer like a fully fledged Hollywood editing bay. And again, it's completely free. On top of all this, there's so many other incredible updates that complement what I've already showed you. I mean, Blender couldn't even cover it in one hour. It's insane. Blender's color space now supports the ACES workflow and HDR output. Geometry Notes just got a massive upgrade with an insane amount of new nodes and possibilities. All of this is just the beginning for Blender. And I feel kind of silly talking about it because uh, I mean, the update came out like a month ago, <laughs> but it's because of people like you who talk about Blender, donate to Blender, or even just watch these kinds of videos that we get to have this incredible Hollywood level toolkit for free. Blender 5.0 truly just changed everything. Now, if you're like me, all these new Blender updates can be kind of confusing, especially the ones you're unsure about, which is why I want to show you this app. It's called Brilliant, and it helps you excel in things like maths and science with visual interactive problem solving. They're also the sponsor of this video. You're already a learner and learning through active problem solving is one of the best ways to make complex concepts stick. And Brilliant does this brilliantly. I've been using Brilliant to just keep myself sharp and it's designed to be personalized for you. Depending on where you're at, Brilliant designs personalized practice sets and reviews. For example, maths. Whether you're trying out percentages or quadratics, all these courses have great hands-on concepts that actually work and make sense. In this day and age of brain rot, I gotta say it is a fantastic alternative. So if you wanna start learning for free, click the link below. Go to brilliant.org forward slash smeef or scan the QR code on screen. You'll also get 20% off a full year of premium. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video.